Well, this is Stoicon X Orlando 2020. It's now 3.30 and time for the last presentation of the day. Uh, what I've collected for you is a series of video clips that I've edited together about my trip to Greece, specifically Athens, Greece last year. Uh, it was for Stoicon uh, 2019 and um, the part of the presentation that I'm particularly interested in showing you is um, how I actually found the ruins for where, uh, where Zeno began teaching in 300 BC. So this was quite, a, um, uh, quite an interesting part of the trip and uh, it had its uh, share of unexpected things. So that uh, makes it a stoic story as well. So I'm gonna start by, um, Instead of using PowerPoint, I'm using a uh, video, which I put together. Uh, you can enter your questions uh, for the end of the uh, session. Just put them in the chat window, like you've been doing with an exclamation mark, and that will do it. The, uh, the sound is not as important as, uh, as later, but uh, this is one of my first images from uh, Greece. It's a very uh, busy city, lots of traffic, cars, taxis, buses. Of course, the difference with this city is that uh, every time you um, walk down a, uh, an alleyway or a sidewalk, you are going to be, um, you're gonna have a chance of, um, of encountering some ancient ruin. This sidewalk, for example, if you see the people in the distance looking to the left, they are actually looking at the site for the Lyceum, Aristotle's school from um, 300 some BC. And also when you look around the city more, you'll see that much of it is under construction. There are lots of neighborhoods around uh, the city, uh, the center of the city. The, uh, one of the first ancient sites that I came upon was Hadrian's Wall. That's what this uh, funny looking structure is. It's actually like two arches. And uh, they've labeled most of the sites so you can at least identify them with accuracy. But um, I found Wikipedia to be very helpful in getting more information on the background of these, of these sites. This, of course, is the Acropolis, uh, which can be seen from most parts of the city. As I pull back here, you'll see that it's really on a hill uh, like they describe it. And of course, the reason for being built on a hill uh, is that I think in ancient times, they built it on a hill for military strategy so that it was very difficult to attack. You can see it here in the distance here overlooking the city. All right, so this is, um, this is the map of the city. Before I actually get to the painted porch, I want to uh, show you where I started out, which was on the east side of the city. And then what I was doing was uh, trying to find with maps like this, where the ancient sites are, which are uh, where this red arrow is pointing to. And um, a lot of them are clustered all together in one part of the city. Um, I'm gonna show you on this close-up map. This is the center part of the city. And initially I thought that my, uh, my destination for the painted porch for the birthplace of Stoicism, I thought it was uh, at the ancient Agora, but I found out that that was not the case. As I studied the maps more and the satellite imagery uh, using uh, Google Maps, most of you know where that satellite image um, option is in Google Maps. You'll know that uh, these satellite images sometimes help you find a location when, you're, when it can be seen from up above. And here, these green areas on the maps are the original parts of Athens, that is, that have the ancient uh, sites to them. Uh, 
All right, now this is um, this is the ancient site that I arrived at. The red arrow is pointing at the ticket booth, that little white ticket booth. Uh, they uh, they took my payment of eight euros. It's not very expensive to get in. I was appreciative of that. And then I started walking down this pathway, uh, which you see uh, on the screen there. Uh, the pathway. Uh, leads to multiple sites, but the building on the right uh, got my attention the most because it's a very dramatic building and it's in great shape also. The city of Athens has restored it uh, to um, its, its beauty and its architecture. This is, the, um, uh, this is the building which is called the Stoa of Adelos. And initially when I arrived here, I thought, wow, I've arrived at the Painted Porch. This is great, look at how beautiful it is. And, uh, but I soon found out that this is the Stoa of Adelos. It's a building that resembles what the painted porch used to look like. And um, for those of you who, are made, who have Googled uh, painted porch in the past, you may know that images of this have come up. It's, uh, it's actually a mistake of Google Maps, people who've contributed to Google Maps and Google Images. They often pay, have posted this image, despite the fact that it's really the Stoa of Adelos, and they call it the Painted Porch, so that's a mistake. While I was here, I also recorded this uh, weird image of me walking away from the camera. Uh, for those of you who know my videos on YouTube, the Self-Reliance series, you'll know that this is the, uh, the way that each video begins. So anyway, to make this, uh, to cut to the chase here, I walked around further. I asked more questions. Where is the painted porch? I had it on my map that I had printed out from the Athens website. It said that the painted porch was building number 26. And I asked about it by name and by number. And people were directing me. You might look over here. You might look over there. Well, basically, I ended up back at the ticket booth, which you see at the bottom of this screen. And I asked, where is the painted porch? And they informed me that the building numbers had all been renumbered. <laughs> so the number that I had been looking for was a false number. And they said the painted porch can be found by exiting the park and walking across the street, uh, which this arrow points to. So actually, I had walked right past the painted porch. I hadn't even noticed it before. But now I had some better directions. And so that's where I walked to next. I walked out of the park and went one block over. And this is actually, um, this was early in the morning, eight o'clock in the morning. I went early because I'd hoped that maybe there'd be fewer tourists around and I could record my own video and um, record pictures like this. I'm, um, in a moment, I'm gonna look through the bars and this is really what I found is that the site is under excavation and the site is um, locked and uh, gated. No one is allowed in there. This was uh, one of the unexpected things I found about this. Now, of course, as I'm looking through the bars here, I'm thinking about how can I film this? How can I introduce this site, make sense of the history? Uh, you'll also notice in the, in the back as a part of a modern city, there's a lot of graffiti in Greece. It's not just at this site. It's wherever you go in Greece, there's a lot of graffiti. And anyway, despite all of these things, I, I tried to figure out what I could say because uh, I'm standing in front of the locked gate. This, by the way, is uh, Stoic Dan being upset. This is how I look when I'm upset. <laughs> I was trying to uh, stay cool and just think of what can I say uh, in front of this gate. But anyway, the lucky part of it was, very lucky, is that as I was recording my video, an archaeologist walked by and unlocked the gate. And I was so amazed at this luck, I of course realized this was a rare opportunity. So I turned to him and I said, I'm Stoic Dan from Orlando and I've come 3,000 miles to see this. And he must have been a very friendly guy because he said, that if I come back in one hour, because he had to take some people through on a walkthrough, but if I come back in one hour, he would take me on a walkthrough of the site. So I finished my video and I, um, I waited there. It was the, 
The morning was heating up. It was uh, already 80 degrees. This is what the walkthrough uh, is going to look like. This site here is the entire site is under excavation, as you can see. What you're looking at now is the actual spot where Zeno was teaching. This is the building. Um, I don't know if you can see my arrow here. We're going to go through this in detail, but this part, this is the front of the building where the columns used to exist. And those columns were not only the painted porch, the open air part of the building, but it also faces the Acropolis, uh, which is in the distance. It's also in ruins. Also, these, these little walls that you see on top of the building were added, I think he said, um, were added 500 or 1,000 years later uh, because uh, you can see the architecture is completely different. These small stones and small walls making uh, small buildings, basically, where people worked in. This here, as we're going to see, is the side of the original painted porch. This is the side of it. OK, I'm going to uh, turn on the sound now so we can listen to the guy, the archaeologist, and myself talking. And we're going to walk around the painted pipe from. <laughs> As you well know, the painted stove was believed to be where it started. Right, Zeno, 300 Zeno. BC. Yeah. That's right. So when I was up there before, I heard you saying something about yeah. this block. I didn't bring my paper I could have shown you. Um, well, just in general. Excavations in 1980, and uh, within the first year, we found you almost immediately see these nice sto uh, marble stones, mm -hmm. nicely cut stones. And we said, Eureka, we found a, a classical building. We, of course, didn't know how big it was. Um, but then we uncovered this, just this tiny triangle right here. And then in the areas we found this, this stone, which is a triglyph. You see there, there are three, um, one, two, three. So two of the, what's interesting about this stone is that two of these blocks would have sat on top of a sturdier beam, and that would have crossed between your two columns. Mm. So for an architect, this is, instead of having a yardstick, <laughs> he can, with his measurements, be able to, with the dimensions of the short side of the stoa, and then with this dimensions and one or two column placings here, he can more or less begin to reconstruct the stone. Mm. So he found, uh, we found this, and this block seems to match uh, in terms of its classical ratios for mm. classical buildings. It would fit on a stoa that was this wide and about 50 meters long. Mm. So we have found... Uh, he also mentioned that, that um, those three markings on the stone was a part of the architecture of this building and of the time. And what we're doing here is we're looking along the, the front face of the building. It's been covered by these other stones, but you can see here some of the original foundation. Uh, anytime you see those perfectly square marble rocks, that was the original foundation. And these other stones up here were added many years later, and they're a different architecture. Two, three, I think four of the inner columns placements, and a couple of the, uh, this is the front porch, the very front of the building. But here, unfortunately, this area has been quarried out, stones of taken. So you would have had a nice, nicely cut stone, one, two, maybe three that have gone out here but they've been removed, mm. and the same thing there. Those are inner foundation stones. So you think the porch, the front of it may have been here? No, 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 no. Or this, here? This is, the, this is the porch. It would have been looked, it had 23 columns, and it's looking towards the Acropolis. Oh, I see. So that's that...
We can't see the Acropolis, of course, because we're so low down in the, in the site. But this hill uh, that you see on the right, uh, over that hill is the Acropolis. Sort of in the front of it. If you want to come in, I guess I could give you a drawing or I can show you our, our website. Oh, sure. That would so, be good. Uh, so this would have been actually a solid wall here. Oh, I see. This would have been like the side of the building. It's, yeah, this is the side of the building. So this is just one, two. It's a little unusual. You had three steps up, and then this is where the wall of the stoa, and it would have been solid here. And then you would have had columns towards the south face. I see. And, columns. and this... We have somewhere in here, of course, is the center of the building, and so we have two or three placings for the columns here where you're, that would have been where the peak. I see. The pitch. Peak, I see. Peak. Yeah. So now if now this... This is the back wall here. It would have been solid. As he walks to the back wall, it's also important to note that the front of the building uh, had a painting on the wall. That is behind the columns, there was a wall to the building and it had a, um, a painting on it, supposedly uh, like a, a huge, um, um, what they do, um, like a mural painting. And it had some uh, items from the culture of uh, at that time. It could have been images of certain battles, certain triumphs of the, uh, that they'd had in war, or it could have been other cultural images. But unfortunately, since the wall is long gone, uh, we uh, may not know what exactly what was on that wall. So this is the back wall. Right. Oh, I see. And it's facing high. So <laughs> upstairs we have a picture. If you take a picture of the sign, you'll see it. Right. So this facing this way, this is facing the Acropolis. That yeah, would have been. That's why this is. Uh, imagine. I mean, even today it's a little warm, but uh, I can. I can imagine it being a lovely place to be, even in winter, because it's always sunny, mm. and you're catching the catching the rays. You're sitting outside. And it's these, at the, it's at the edge of the city civic right. center. Behind right. this, we're almost certain that we can see from the architecture that it's the more simple. Uh, domestic structures. This is the rather large blocks, but behind this, after this building, they're, they're just smaller buildings. And we begin to see possibly what we would consider workshops, things like that, hmm. through the, from the archaeology. And are those buildings the, with the smaller stones, are they from another time or from the yes, same yes, time? Yes. No, no, they're much later from Middle Ages, let's call it, oh. Christian. I see. Late Roman. So that's that's what we're dealing with right here. Is that these are uh, middle uh, late Christian Christian era, hmm. uh, and so what the Christians did, or the Middle Ages, whatever you call that period, the Dark Period, um, they were just gathering up stones and building into the walls. So you see marble pieces, probably from the show or other classical buildings. For those of you who are interested in the history side of Stoicism, this is an interesting uh, part of the video because he's walking through these small structures that were built many hundreds of years after the original site. And his job as the archeologist and his team is they have to analyze and document, but they also wanna remove all that dirt and stone so they can get to the lower level where the, uh, the painted porch is. So that's a, that's a very difficult job for an archaeologist. Here's marble. There's the porous foundation. There's a big piece back there. Let's say the, the Middle Ages, 10th century, 11th century, and then beneath that, we'd like to take out all of these walls hmm. so we can get down to the classical level. Right. Because I was noticing... You're, stand, see, you're, you're standing classical, and we're about what, foot, 18 classical. inches above that right but we're getting really close and if we look at the walls on the side of the property yeah. you can see how much uh accumulates over what two thousand years from the original level yeah. some of that is uh maybe brought in to level it up others you can see we can walk over here this is actually a little 
It's the, it's the lowest part of a valley. See, this is a river, so it's sedimentary. Water has flowed into here. Another thing about this is that uh, this area was outside of the formal uh, city for a long time. Hmm. You know, Athens, in classical times, its walls were maybe a kilometer outside. And then the yeah. Perulians came in about 260, 270 AD, destroyed Athens. Hmm. So the city hurriedly took the building stones out of the classical buildings that had been there for centuries. And then they reconstructed walls to make a smaller circuit wall. And in fact, the Stoa of Atalos, the back wall of it became, it went up to, you've been up to the library. Mm -hmm. That became part of its structure. So they needed to make, because there were the barbarians from the north, mm -hmm. they tried to hurriedly recreate in the next decades new city walls. So this was outside, and we can see uh, sort of uh, it's sometimes occupied from the archaeology, and then it lies dormant, and then it mm. becomes reoccupied, mm. and then dormant. For a while, we found quite high, maybe, um, we found horse skeletons in a pit. It was probably just a dumping ground. Mm. And But then uh, the city moves in, they start building foundations. That's a fairly deep basement right there, but it's mid-19th mm. century, late 19th century. have to get beneath this level. Mm -hmm. before you immediately get into, let's say, the Middle Ages. But this, this actually gives you a nice... There's your classical that you were standing on. Right. Behind it, there's a couple of Roman walls that have been built, mm -hmm. those that we walked parallel. And then, this is the Middle Ages, 10th century. In the last minute of this video, uh, you're also going to see the buildings that surround the site on all sides they, they not only have the graffiti, but those buildings are actually occupied buildings. They have marketplaces, restaurants, and um, this, of course, remember, this was a, a year ago. Uh, so this was pre-pandemic and all those, I can tell you for certain, all those shops and restaurants were full every day. It was a very busy, um, busy part of town. 11th century, century, domestic houses, and then up here is your 19th century hmm. building. Well, it's, it's also fascinating, and also I observe that the city streets today are now on a diagonal from yeah. the way they used to be. You're right. Good observation. But, uh, but that's, you know, with a great expanse of time, that's what happens. Things change. I don't know... Uh, I don't know why that is, other than this area was largely destroyed during the um, War of Independence. Hmm. And I don't know if it was that time or it was even before that they went to a more... This street is more east, west, north, south, more... Great, well... That's the, uh, the best part of the video clips uh, of my trip. Um, I think I learned so much. And uh, of course, the experience of walking through the, the painted porch, the actual location where Zeno was teaching so long ago, uh, that was quite an experience. Um, so let's see, I'm going to uh, look for your questions now. If you have any questions, uh, you can paste them into the chat window with an exclamation mark. And um, see, I'm also glad to see that the uh, winners uh, of the book giveaway have uh, responded in the chat window. That's good. Any questions at all? All right, it could be that you're getting a little zoned out. It's been several hours of stoicism. You know, that's a little bit more than your, uh, oh, here's a question from Mark. Dan, did you get the impression the painted porch was in the city center or on the outskirts? Yeah, the, um, uh, the archeologists did say that this site was on the outskirts of the city because the Acropolis was the center of the city and everything radi radiated out from that. 
So uh, it's also very interesting to me that uh, how he talked about the stones from the site were taken back or repurposed, as we would say today in modern times, repurposed so that they could build new walls and new buildings. And um, yeah, oh, and uh, the next question from Tim, what is the ultimate goal in restoring it? Well, um, we have to be careful about that word restoring. I don't know that they wanna restore it, but right now they're just excavating to find maybe more clues at the site. Uh, we don't know, for example, how long Epictetus actually taught there, but we know that that's uh, approximately in the year 300 or 301 BC. That's where he started um, teaching. And um, uh, let's see. Oh, also the, the scholars uh, that we have today, like John Sellers, Donald Robertson and others are of course interested if we do continue excavation, what might we find underneath the rubble might there be a container of something, a scroll that we haven't seen yet? Uh, of course it might be. <laughs> if you find a scroll today under the ground for that long, it may be ready to crumble into dust. So um, they have to be very careful of that. And um, Karen asks, uh, when you returned, did you study some archeology span of the site and follow the progress? Yeah, the most interesting part of it for me is how it was built up over the years with more layers of uh, city on top of it. And eventually like the um, archeologist guessed, it could be that when Athens was attacked and destroyed that maybe the city plan was lost and the streets were rebuilt at a new angle because the streets that were, um, if you saw the angle of the building, the streets back there were 45 degrees off from the the city streets in 2019, which were high above it. So the whole plan of the city had changed. And I think that's a very interesting part of the history of, of Athens. Uh, someone is asking uh, how far away was Epicurus's garden? Uh, I'm not sure of that, but I can tell you, I visited the Lyceum, which was uh, Aristotle's school. And I think that was uh, maybe 10 miles away towards the east. Uh, Aristotle school also had its challenges to be found. So um, because it's, you know, it's, I think Aristotle school, if I remember right, it's actually behind a police building. And there was no signage out front that says, you know, look behind here. So you really had to find it with Google Maps or some other tool. Um, yeah. All right. Well, we're drawing to a close. Uh, any other questions? Uh, Okay. Well, I'm really glad so many of you could join us today. Um, I was thinking about last night how I could conclude the meeting today. And last night I was taking my evening walk and I thought about what can we learn from this? You know, it's cool to be able to say, oh, I attended a Stoicon event or I, I visited Athens, Greece, because we have learned something on some level. But I think we can all go to the next level, which is to apply it to something. Of course, in Stoicism, applying it to our lives is very important. That's what we're here for, to improve uh, some aspect of our lives. But I think we can also go even one step better than that, which is to synthesize these ideas and maybe create something new that has not existed before. Uh, maybe one of you will think of a, an idea for a blog or an article out of this. Uh, where you can not only help spread the, the word of Stoicism, but also to modernize these ideas and help make it accessible to other people. So I encourage you to do some of these things, applying things, synthesizing ideas. And um, I'd also like to thank so much our speakers today, Donald Robertson, Tim Iverson, Brittany Pilat. All of you made the experience such a rich event and we are gonna have Stoicon X Orlando next year too. So probably towards the end of the year uh, again, and it'll, it'll probably be virtual at that time also so that we can include people from all the different states who are attending today. So until then, I hope you'll tune in to some of our discussion groups, Orlando Stoics, Tampa Stoics, Minnesota Stoics. We're all online and we're all virtual at this time. 
So I hope to see you next time, somewhere, somehow. Be well, everyone. Thanks for attending.